You are taking your first steps into Automatic 11.11 and Stable Diffusion, but you still don't know yet what is the meaning and the function of the parameters like Sampling Method, Sampling Steps, Batch Size and Count, or even the Seed and the CFG Scale. But don't worry, I will explain everything in this video. Other than that, you are still having problems like generating a great image, but then you add something else to the prompt and generate again. What happens? You get a completely different image. And that's kind of annoying, right? But don't worry about that, because I will also explain how can you avoid and mitigate that problem using one of the parameters in this video. Let's go into that and start with the basic settings to generate an image. And let's start from the top. At the Stable Diffusion checkpoint, you have the models that you have downloaded and loaded into the models folder. For first time users, you can use the version 1.5 from Stable Diffusion. You have the link in the description. Next to the drop down, we have the refresh button. This refresh button is used to update the list of models that you have available. For example, you are running Automatic 11.11 and you download a new model. If the model isn't displayed here, you press the button refresh and it will be displayed. Next, you have the prompt where you should describe what you want to see in the generated image. Remember to be detailed and specific in here. I will make a guide explaining how to create a good prompt with a list of tricks and a couple of suggestions. Next we have the negative prompt, which is basically the opposite of the prompt, where you should describe what you don't want to see in the generated image. You can always use a negative prompt that is universal or generic, like this one. Next we have the wide and the height, which is where you select the size of the generated image. When using a version 1 model, like this one, 1 1.5, you should always select at least one of these as 512. If you want, for example, a portrait mod, you can write 768 in the height or the other way, 768 in the height for a landscape. Then we have the batch count, which is the number of times you run the image generation pipeline. You'll get one image for each time the pipeline is run, so if you select 4, you'll get 4 image. You also have the batch size, which is the number of images generated in each pipeline. However, if you face any kind of memory issue, it is advised to use the batch count instead of the batch size, but usually if you don't have any problem, you can use the batch size because it will be faster. One thing to have in mind is that the number of images generated will be the batch count multiplied by the batch size. So imagine if you have 2 by 2, you'll have 4 image generated. And if you have 2 by 3, you'll have 6 image generated. Let's stick with one for now. Now let's generate our first image. Cat in suit, for example. Meeting. You press generate and in a couple of seconds it will generate the image. This is not what we want so let's generate again. Now we get an ok image. Let's move with this one. So in here you have a couple of options to save the image. You can press save and here you can download the image. And you can also download the zip file containing the image or send to the image to image tab or in paint or extras. Now let's continue to the next parameter, which is the sampling method. In the sampling method, you can select an algorithm for the denoising process, which is basically to remove the noise from the image and improve the quality. One good algorithm is this one, and I will explain you why. This is one of the algorithms that offers a good balance between the speed and the quality of the image generated. You have here a benchmark for the speed of the algorithms, but feel free to test them out and choose the one that works best for you. And you may want to avoid the ancestral ones, which are the ones with an A at the end. These ones can be unstable even with larger sampling steps. And what are the sampling steps? The sampling steps are the steps for the denoising process. Usually the more the better, but it also takes more time. You can start something around 25 or 30, but feel free to test higher values and see if it takes too much time on your setup or not. Alright, now let's face that problem where we want to generate again the same image, but with more text in the prompt. Do you remember that common problem where the image is completely different when we add something else to the prompt? I will explain you now how can you avoid that. The seed is the value used to generate the initial random tensor 
which will basically control the content generated in the image. Each image generated has its own seed value and you can find it here. So if you copy this seed and you paste it here and you generate the image in the same conditions as before. So we started by using Euler A and sampling steps of 20. If you press generate, it will generate the same image. Here it is, the same image. If you want to use a random seed again, you just need to press this button, which will set it to minus one. But for now, let's test the same seed and add something else to the prompt. Let's try to add some glasses to the cat. And see what happens. Okay, now we have a cool cat generated. I like this, I like this. I'm even going to save that. All right, so now I want to show you another thing. If you change the size again, you will have a completely different image because this matters for the image generated. So let's go to back to the same image with the same size. I press generated again and you'll see again the same image. So the seed is very important when you want to add something else to the prompt in order to have the same image but with something else in the image. And this is a pro tip, leave a like if you didn't know this one. Now, did you know that you can set up the image generation to be more creative or more strictly regarding your prompt with the CFG scale, the classifier free guidance scale. And how it works, that's simple. If you set it too low, it will be very creative regarding your prompt. Well, it might completely ignore your prompt. On the other hand, if you set it to 30, it will be very strictly regarding your prompt. Let's test this out. First, with the scale of 1. Let's generate and see what happens. As you can see, I don't know what to tell you about this, but it completely ignores the prompt and you don't get the result that you want. So I would suggest to not use this. On the other hand, you can try, for example, 3. Let's test 3. Okay, we don't have the suit, but at least we still have the sunglasses. So let's go to the opposite side and test with 30. Let's generate and see what happens. Usually the colors are highly saturated in here. Yes. So we have a cool cat in the suit with sunglasses, but the colors are very saturated. So let's try something around 20. Yeah, 20. Let's test 20 and see what happens. So this is kind of try and error to see what is the best image. So the cat is still cool, but I still prefer the first one. So let's give it something like 15. Well, it seems a, a very similar one. And the last try, something like uh, 11. <laughs> so the cat is cool. And the last one, which is the seven, if you generate again with the same parameters, you will have the same image as before. Here it is, our image. I hope this is helpful to you because this tricks has helped me a lot so far while having some fun generating image. If you are still here and enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and take a look at this playlist about stable diffusion. You can also take a look at that video over there because you might like it and I hope to see you around. Cheers, bye.